Okay, I believe this is uh, card eight. No, nine B, whatever. I'm not sure. I think. And um, anyway, there are a couple of a uh, couple of things going on here that I want to explain and make sure that you understand. Um, the first thing I want to make sure you do is is understand that the uh, the um, the number you need to remember. Uh, with relays is the number two. All right, and the reason I want you to remember the number two is because every relay has at least two circuits, okay? And um, I drew this this way on purpose to show the large wire which would carry the big amperage and the small wire which carries the low amperage and the uh, number is that this switch may only switch 0 0.2 amps which is two tenths of an amp or 200 milliamps and the, the, the larger contacts might be switching as much as, oh let me get my face out of there, um, might, might be switching as much as 50 amps, okay, and there are a couple of reasons that this is good, namely, uh, you can use very small switches to run really big things, okay, so straight wiring stuff is not always the best decision, and if you know how relays work, then you can certainly use them to your advantage, um, and uh, they all work the same way, so there's only really only one way to hook them up, and uh, once you learn that, then you're going to be a lot better off and you can go out there and work on stuff. The other thing I want to point out um, is that um, the relay is the crossroads of the system. Okay, So the way this is built and the way this is laid out kind of shows that in a, in a rather unusual way. Um, because this circuit here, which is what's controlling the coil, and this circuit, which is going to be running the motor, uh, it doesn't, um, they, they don't touch, but they all come together and give you four test points in the relay base, right? So here's the relay base. So I've got test points. Okay, so it, I mean this this distance here from the relay to ground through the motor could be a hundred feet. All right? And you know, this is probably going to be pretty short, but you know, this could also be, you know, 15, 20 feet, say. Okay. Well the cool thing is that sitting on your butt with a cup of coffee out of the rain out of the snow it it's possible to test all four of these circuit segments from here okay so right here I have the ability to test hands are getting kinda full of stuff markers and stuff okay so I have the ability to test right here if you look and you memorize here here's 85 86 well notice in this drawing 86 and this is partially schematic reading, and that's why these drawings are so important. 86 goes to the fuse, so I should be able to read system voltage right here and not guess. And 85 goes to ground through the through this micro switch, and that's here, so I could read the resistance from here to ground and close the switch and expect to go from infinite or OL to zero. So I'm expecting that to be the case. Well, I should also read voltage at 30, but here's the cool one. I can ohm out the motor from here. Okay, so here's my relay base, and if my 87 goes to the motor, then all I have to do is put my ohm meter in here, and I'm ohming out the motor, sitting on my ass in the cab, not on this snow-covered, icy, wet, muddy, dirty, coal-covered, you know, um, piece of equipment, 
trying to find this motor because here's the problem. What if you find the motor, you unplug it, you ohm it out, okay, or you use one of those, you know, like something like a power probe and you go, rrr, 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 motor runs. All right, well, you know, doing that doesn't do a damn thing for you because this is only going to fail 20% of the time. The wiring is going to fail 80% of the time. And even if the power probe lets you know that the fault is um, in a wire, it then doesn't help you find the fault, okay? Um, but just a plain old normal ohm meter, without any special fancy schmancy whatever, you just put it in here in 87 and go to ground. And then when you go to ground, you read the resistance of the motor. Okay, so I'm I'm testing the entire relay system from right here. All right, and you need to pause for a minute and think about this and think about the way vehicles are built. Right. because uh, there's 30, usually, not always, but usually the voltage for the load. Here's the switch terminal going to the load. Here, in this case, with the numbers I've used, uh, 86 is going to the battery, and 85 is going to ground through the switch. So I can test these four circuit segments from here. And the cool thing is, I pretty much guarantee you that only one of them failed. So you have to know all of these correct readings so you can figure out which one's not correct. Um, that's a very simple thing to do. Okay, uh, so this is this is pretty much um, uh, how I approach this, and uh, it, I'm, I believe in very simple diagnostics. I don't want to get all complicated with a bunch of expensive parts, you know, and tools that do. I mean, that do a bunch of stuff. You can do basically everything you need to do in this system with a relay with the cover off of it and a 9 volt battery or two 9 volt batteries okay so first of all two there are two circuits only one of them probably failed and um, I'm going to show you how they work and and how we test them and I'm also going to show you how uh, we can read and understand what's going on okay so uh, so there's that Okay, now when you look at these, the only difference um, is is here. Uh, we can switch either the positive or the negative, and it doesn't matter. Um, most ECMs like to switch negative because the voltage drop um, allows the ECM to have zero volts on the connectors instead of 24 volts, which is just safer. There is no major advantage. You know, I've heard all these stories about less arcing, and that, that, that's a bunch of crap. Um, I can prove that I can get an equal-sized arc switching either positive or negative. And it, it's, so that's, that doesn't make any sense. Um, but the, the, the most important thing here is to understand that all we're doing is turning on a coil. All right? And just because there might be five wires, you can't let that freak you out because the wires go to terminals and you know what the terminals are and you just pick out which one is which. Um, and by the way, if you notice, um, these two wires are smaller than these three wires. So two tenths of an amp here, 50 amps here. Okay. So um, there's another visual cue. Okay. So the common is different. So it's the common. And this is my normally open, there's my normally closed, and these are my two coil circuits. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, solder a relay in here, and uh, we'll uh, build a, we'll build this, and then we'll come back and I'll demonstrate some stuff for you, and uh, we'll we'll move on. As you do this card, one of the things I hope you will begin to understand. Um, is the reason that I say system instead of circuit is because you know a circuit is a single circuit all right and I, I'm kind of getting around to the idea that just because something looks like it's connected to the um, to something that doesn't mean it's in the circuit all right and that's 
that's a danger when it comes to reading schematics because um, it makes the world makes the world feel more confusing and the world doesn't need to be confusing so if you look at what I built here I mean this looks kind of like bleh, right but look at the drawing it's very simple two very simple circuits power ground load and switch I mean that's everything you expect in a circuit power ground load and switch all right Um, that's a circuit and and it doesn't matter what the wires look like wiring is not circuitry wiring is wiring okay so you know this this relay could be in the relay panel this wiring could be you know two inches away um, and uh, this could be a hundred feet to a big pump motor uh, and this could be you know upstairs or in a, in a big crane or this could be something as simple as a as a light switch on your you know on your F 150 or your Chevy Tahoe or whatever it doesn't matter um, but the point is is that this circuit here coil circuit is not connected electrically to the motor circuit and I intentionally had you guys build two circuits to point out that there are in fact two separate circuits and um, if I were to blow this fuse or blow this fuse then the relay system wouldn't work, but it doesn't mean that one of the circuits um, is one of the two circuits is broken. All right, so we've got two circuits here and here, here and here. Okay, we've got one load in one circuit, we've got one load in another circuit in the form of that coil. Okay, and I'm gonna I got a little silver marker here. I've never done this before. Let me see if I can do this here. Um, here's 30 and 87. So here's the normally, let's see if this will work. Here's 87. There's the normally open switch. And then the coil actually goes here. Yeah, you can see that. Okay, so it's a it's the crossway. It's the it's the crossroads, that's the word I was looking for. It's the crossroads of the system. Okay, this is on milliamps. So the first thing I hope I can do if I haven't blown the fuse, um, I'm expecting, since I know, since I know that the resistance of this coil is about um, 90 ohms, and my voltage is about 12. I need to charge the battery. I haven't done that yet. 12 divided by 90. It's about 0.1333333. So if I'm lucky, when I turn the system on by jumping across this switch, I should get about 0.13333. But it's not through here. Okay. Is I'm going to turn on this circuit um, by jumping across that switch, which is this switch. And if I did my math right. I think it's still on the calculator. No, it's gone. Would be 0.133333 amps. And I have the battery charger on now, so it might be a little higher. Okay. So it is. It's 1333313. Oh. 1333. Holy crap, I got it right. 1333333333333. Okay. Now notice that the amperage was going down. And part of the reason is that the coil is getting warm. And that increases resistance, but then also um, the battery is gradually probably losing its voltage. So, um, so that proves that. Well, okay. So that was 0.1333 amps. Okay. So this circuit was 0.133 amps, which is 133 milliamps, which is what we saw. Um, this one, you can't really do it because motors work a little differently than, than other resistors. I know that if I ohm it out, I get about six ohms and I don't get two amps. I get about a quarter of an amp roughly. And that's because of the peculiar nature of a motor, which we'll talk about in other cards. But, um, suffice to say that this motor, when it's not turning as a direct short, but as it starts turning, it 
has more effective resistance. All right, I'm not. It's not really resistance, but it's called effective resistance because it does slow current down. But I expect this number. Put this back in here, I guess. I expect this number to be around uh, between 0.2 and 0.35. Well, yeah, that's pretty much splits it right down the center, right? So there's my 280 milliamps. compared to 130 milliamps. All right, now that's not a really good example, okay, because normally this motor could be 50 amps, all right, but I'm just demonstrating. Notice I haven't turned the relay on. I haven't flipped the switch, and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm letting um, the amp meter do the work for me. Now, admittedly, when I turned on the coil here or here, then the coil is clicking. Now let me show you why I have a compass on my watch. Okay, you can use a compass this way and this is proving the magnetic field. See the compass needle move? In the case, what I'm doing is I'm switching the, uh, the ground of the coil but I'm switching the positive of the motor, all right, because this is my ground and this is my um, uh, coil circuit. So I could I could do something as simple as just go here and here, and it works. Okay, if I were to go here, it would blow the fuse. I don't want to do that because I'd really prefer not to deal with that. But anywhere in this system, when I complete the circuit across these switch this switch. It doesn't matter, okay, because it's it's uh, um, I'm completing the circuit across the switch, and that then turns on the coil, okay. Now let me swap out the relay real quickly, and uh, then we'll be able to see a little bit better, and I'll be able to show you something that I like to show you in terms of diagnosing these systems.